Hi, my name is Rika Muranaka. I'm a composer, producer, and now I'm a virtual reality developer. Um, let me tell you about my background, how I started this journey, actually. Um, I've been playing piano all my life. I started uh, playing piano when I was three years old, and my father actually asked me, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? And the rest of my life, what are, you, what are you talking about? Then he's like, well, you can't depend on father. You can't depend on company. You can't depend on anybody. You and yourself and God. So I said to myself, okay, I like music. And I think I'm going to write music. And I want to compose. And I want to be, that's going to be my job. I didn't know, you know. And I just said it at that time. And I didn't think I was going to be able to make money or make a living doing what I love to do. And I had no, you know, like all my friends, like they, they have a problem. Oh, I don't know what to do. And uh, I, don't, I have no passion doing what they do for a living. But I have a no problem. And I always love to write music. I love to play. I used to practice 10 hours a day because I just want to be the best piano player. You know, I, at that time, I wanted to be jazz pianist. I wanted to be like Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, Bill Evans, and uh, they're my icon. And I just wanted to be the best. So I practiced 10 hours a day. And uh, I, then, you know, I actually became jazz pianist at the age 17, um, Chicago. And I grew up in Japan, and I came to the United States when I was 11 years old. And I just couldn't find a jazz uh, piano teacher in Japan. So this is great. I could, I could play jazz. So I want, my mother actually found a, a jazz school in Chicago, private school. And uh, then she put me to jazz school at the, over the weekends. Every Saturday, I would go to... Uh, you know, uh, learn how to play jazz and theory, harmony, everything. Um, so you know, and that's how my my music career start in Chicago and uh, Alan Swain Music School. That was it. Like he was a he was the original like Alan Swain two four you know two five seven a uh, two five one and uh, you know he has all those records. Jamie Ebersol, uh, you know, like that, that was like a Jamie Ebersol, how to play jazz and then they'll teach you how to play and with an audio at that time is like a, they just had the record. So you buy Jamie Ebersol, but he had a school. So I went to school and, uh, you know, and I practice every day. I want to play like Chick Corea, so I transcribe uh, what he did and by ear and I, I would transcribe everything uh, on the album who I want to play. So Bill Evans is uh, another uh, composer, a pianist, which I love and uh, you know he's been dead a um, long time ago but you know all those people I had a chance to just go ahead don't come. I told them just not to come. I'm not doing it anyway. So tell so as a four. As four. So, so we're going to come back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The pianist. Okay, so like Bill Evans is another person. And I found um, later on after with that, uh, college that I was in jazz band. Um, then I found another person. Uh, to uh, to learn how to play jazz, and I found uh, Larry Novak. He played like Bill Evans, and his wife, both are p great pianists, 
and they were playing uh, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly is like a blue note in Chicago, and he played with everybody from Ella Fitzgerald to Sarah Vaughn. I mean, you name it, he played with everybody, and uh, he was like a band leader. He was like a D cat to go to. So, and his wife is uh, playing at the London House, and he was playing at the Mr. Kelly, and they fell in love, and they got married. So it's like two greatest piano players. And uh, I would love to go and sit there and watch and hear them play. And that was like the most, uh, you know, greatest moment in my life. And, you know, he doesn't take, uh, he doesn't teach at that time, but I convinced him to uh, teach me. So I'll go to his house and uh, I'll play with him and he will teach me and uh, we just had a good time. And it's just like, a, at that time I was just wanted to play, you know. I didn't think anything about how this whole, you know, music careers evolved to this virtual reality. But, you know, um, playing in Chicago, playing a club, theater, uh, they taught me a lot. Um, you know, that's where all my business, actually, the foundation came from. Uh, because my, I was, uh, um, you know, just playing piano. It's like I was happy with that. Then one guy told me, it's like if you're gonna be doing this for a living, you gotta be better than anybody. You know, you gotta be better than guys because guys, there's a boys club. They're always gonna cover, and they're all gonna, you know, they're always gonna help each other. And you just a woman, so you gotta be damn good. You know, he told me it's like you gotta be five times better than anybody. And you can't use your female, you know, uh, fit, uh, you can't just get up there, you know, you think you're going to make it, you know. If you make it, and it, not your talent, but, you know, so that you, that's not how you do it. So you got to make it your talent. So I think you're a great composer. I think you have a talent being a good composer and arranger. So you should really, really concentrate on that. He's like, there's a... A lot of good piano players, and it, and uh, it's gotta be difficult to make a living as a piano player. So at 16, 17, I already knew what I wanted to do because I'm just gonna write. He says like being uh, writing music is the only thing um, that's gonna make you, um, you know, be bit better than anybody, and you could write, and the song is gonna live. So not, you know, people know about you because of the song. So he told me, it's like, I had to uh, write music. So I'm glad in the copyrights publishing, have my own publishing, copyrights my, uh, my music, and all that stuff. And he taught me anything about the business. So producers, arranger, and the producer point. And uh, at the age 17, 18, I know about all the music business and uh, all the jazz musicians told me it's like oh my god it's like I mean I help so many people and uh, and uh, they all taught me about business how how they used to uh, practice uh, they used to play 16 hours a day and they <laughs> that's and uh, you know at the end of the day they have nothing they don't have publishing they don't have anything and I wish I, I kept my publishing and back in the day, nobody knew, and uh, you know, uh, these guys, they just uh, provided them a uh, quick fix so they could keep going. And that's what they did, and Charlie Parker, John Coulter, and Charlie Parker died on the street, and uh, he should never die that way. And, uh, you know, Jaco Pastorius, uh, he got stolen, <laughs> I swear to God, he got divorced, and uh, his wife took his publishing. And he's crazy, I mean, you know, but at the same time, like, he's like, um, how he died was so tragic and such a loss. And, you know, I mean, it's, he got killed by, uh, by Bowser. Uh, like, this guy just beat, beat him to death at the bar. And he's the greatest jazz, uh, jazz bassist ever lived in this mankind. I swear to God, he's the best. And, you know, he lost uh, publishing. And he lost all this great music, and that's what I knew then. It's like, uh, you know, you gotta keep on to your publishing and holding on to that. But anyway, um, 
So, you know, um, that was like my jazz, you know, career back then in, in Chicago. Then I went, I moved back when I was 24, I think I moved back to Japan and I did uh, commercials, I, I did writing jingles for advertising and company and I did Subaru uh, Asahi beer. I did, uh, I can't remember all this, uh, all this music I wrote for the uh, advertise company and and then I, I was on TV uh, doing live at that time I actually uh, had a, in Japan it was like a lot of people came from uh, Chaka Khan's band to all those guys from uh, um, I don't know R&B whatever whoever got hit back then um, they were there in Japan playing the club and uh, so I got I made a band together with uh, Paul Jackson Jr. He with the Head Hunter, um, he won the Grammy with uh, Herbie Hancock, and uh, uh, then I had another guy uh, Bobby Watson. Uh, he won the Grammy with uh, Chaka Khan, um, and it's like all those uh, people from LA uh, just moved to Japan. Met the Jap beautiful Japanese lady, and they end up staying in Japan. And I could see why now that I lived in uh, LA, why I didn't want to move to Japan. And it just gave them such a good feeling to be there because people treat them like a star, and they are a star. And they treated me, treated them like a, you know, some somebody they deserve. And uh, here in America, they don't, they don't really treat a talent. Uh, or jazz musician, you know, and uh, that's why jazz is dying because they don't understand. And the jazz is the only thing, uh, you know, was born here in America, and they went every every place else, like Europe, Japan, Asia, and every every pl other place in America, they're embraced by people, and jazz is only, you know, uh, that's an art form and. Uh, Right now, it's so such a, a dying breed, dying art in jazz. So that's why I brought jazz into game. I play, and uh, um, and I promise our Blakey, I will, you know, pass on the legacy. I promise with our Blakey, he's another jazz our Blakey and the jazz messenger. If anybody know anything about jazz, he is the greatest drummer of all time, and uh, I had a chance to hang out with. Uh, our Blakey, uh, when he came to Japan, and then we went to sushi with uh, Robin Eubanks and uh, who else? I can't remember all those people. Then uh, um, you know, it, it's just such a good time. And like uh, everybody used to call me, "Hey, I'm in Japan." Like Freddie Hubbard used to call me, uh, Woody Shaw, and all those people I met in Japan is like, uh, you know, it was such a great time. And uh, our Blakey told me, "You gotta pass on." Jazz to next legacy. So I promised him I would try to do that, and uh, I didn't know at that time I was gonna put jazz music into video game. So that's why my I if I had a chance I would do that. Then uh, second uh, Metal Gear Solid, I had a chance to do that uh, full orchestra and two music I composed for uh, a video game it was two. Uh, jazz songs and uh, at that time even now it's like nobody is actually recording jazz for the video game and jazz is so uh, unique and niche market and but you know a record company don't think you're gonna be embraced by kids but if you put it in the right format and and because they don't play in the radio doesn't mean it's not good music if you all those people who are my fan because I just got back from San Diego Comic Con. They line up Mondo released reissuing soundtrack in vinyl and they have the best is yet to come. Uh, that's recorded in the island and the Irish music, Irish uh, Gaelic uh, wars, but nobody knows the wars till like recently or something. And uh, I wrote the music in English and I, I translated that into. Uh, you know, I translate that into uh, Gaelic, so that's how I write music. I usually write words in the English and I translate. 
so that's what I did. And uh, when I went to Buenos Aires to do Silent Hill, I I wrote in English. And then when I got there, I I wrote I translated that into Spanish. And I don't speak any of the language, but I find somebody who is a translator. So uh, the music is global, and uh, it's it's just uh, it's fascinating because I meet people everywhere I go and like they happen to know my music. They don't know me that I write music for Metal Gear or Silent Hill Castlevania Symphony but they know my work and you know that's why it was kind of touching and overwhelmed and I was really shocked to see uh, so many people line up to get my autograph in San Diego and uh, it was, the line was ridiculous like a was wrapped around and uh, everyone's waiting for me to sign their order. I felt bad uh, when I had this one guy uh, came from all the way from Vietnam and he wanted me to sign autograph to his sister, his brother and the record company said no you can only sign one autograph per person and I just you know I was like oh you know I just did it too and he got mad so it's like well just come back. Anyway San Diego was was exciting. Uh, record company flew me in to for the Comic Con and uh, they treated me real nice. I felt like oh my god, it's like they treated me like a star. It's like I felt like a Michael Jackson. It was like you don't get that. You know what I mean? Mondo is like a really nice and they're really actually they're really big. I didn't even know. I thought it's like oh this is just a little company who likes to you know uh, put it out the you know like a statue the animation and the records and stuff like that, but I found out they actually own 32 theaters. And they are like uh, affiliated with the uh, theaters and they have the niche market and the uh, figures and the records and uh, I had no idea. So um, it was such a great um, success in San Diego Comic Con and I only had one hour to sign an autograph for everybody and uh, they had to uh, turn away so many people so a lot of people didn't get to uh, get my autograph and maybe next time uh, uh, they'll get my autograph you know I don't really go to Comic Con anymore because I got into VR so um, you know uh, only reason I got into VR because my fan in the Comic Con so I get I get these ideas when I you know I go to the Comic Con or people hit me up and my Instagram or Facebook and they tell me it's like hey why don't you do this and why don't you do that and they have a, a Metal Gear Solid fan like Argentina Italy Germany and the UK and they, you know I'm a, I'm a connected with a lot of kids so if you could reach me um, or t uh, reach out to me by Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, I'm, I'm there. Uh, you get all this uh, uh, information here. Uh, so reach out to me and the, uh, Instagram and I'll reply. I make sure you get your um, you know, uh, email back or text me, I'll text you back. So I'm pretty good at um, replying back. So don't think, um, oh, you're not gonna get anything back. Uh, you will get you know reply back, you know. So that's what I do, and uh, I actually became uh, friends with a lot of people, my fans, and uh, you know, um, my fans are great. Uh, if it wasn't for my fans, I wouldn't be here, and uh, I wouldn't be doing virtual reality, and uh, I'm trying to uh, change the world. And I know everybody thinks, like, what do you mean change the world? I changed the game and the game, I changed the game, and the, how music should sound like in the game. So, uh, uh, music is, is, people don't really know that music is 80% of the effect that you're going to feel. You're going to feel, uh, because a Hitchcock had, and a team, Hitchcock and Bernard Harmon, that's the best team, the sound and the film. And once, you know, Hitchcock got big and uh, he really, that's why I really care, uh, don't understand, it's like, Hitchcock let this guy go and he hired somebody uh, somebody else and it was never the film was never the same it's that Bernard Harmon's music sound effect made his sound his film 
psycho. When you hear shine, 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 you know that's psycho. You know with the uh, with the string, ugh. you know and the jars like da da, da da, da 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 da. You know it's like an anticipation. You set up the the you know the scene of the movie. So it's the video game the same thing. You set the mood to tone for the video game and the scene. You know what I mean? So I I really think the music is something. Music is programming. People don't understand that. When you have a music, when you study background music, and your brain is actually memorizing it, programming everything. So when you study the final, your you know test or whatever, then you have music in background. When you put on that music, automatic the brain will recognize that and then remember everything. So people don't know that music is uh, programming. So that's why I'm doing this virtual reality because I, I'm, I have the virtual reality, virtual reality uh, therapy uh, with what I have the prototypes. I already have this um, uh, beach and uh, mountains and a serene uh, uh, film, uh, 36, 360. And the sound I have is uh, so relaxing. Within 30 seconds, your heart rate go down 30 points. And it's by neural beats and everything. So I can't really get into this uh, because that's, you know, secrets. And I, so something that I'm going to do is uh, you're going to feel music. So I want to, I'm actually really big on uh, handicap. I want to have the deaf person to feel the music the first time. I want to have a blind person to see um, see the world the first time. I mean, you know, this is reality and this is now. So I want to, I want with the technology and the music, I could change how you feel, how you see things, and how, you know, I could change the world. And with, with the vibration and frequency, you could actually manipulate the brain and you could repair DNA, rewire the brain circuit. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm doing this concert. Um, I'm looking for a sponsor, so anybody out there. and. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually looking for investors to now right now, and uh, I'm actually going to do a concert. I want now that uh, it lets me know uh, I have fans. Thank God to Konami, and uh, you know I worked for 20 years. That's 20 years, uh, and the song I produce all the music for the Metal Gear Solid series. So, and no, not many people know about it because you know I'm just a behind scene, but. The music, uh, the fan knows, and uh, because of that, I'm able to take my music, and I'm gonna start performing this year. So a lot of people waiting for that, and uh, I'm gonna start doing the video, the 360, and I wanna be on the stage, and I wanna have the speaker vibration, and I got this company, and uh, it's made by a French company, and so I wanna have um, speakers on the stage, and. Uh, and also on the ceiling, so and I have a uh, like a sound woofer on on the seat, so you're going to feel the music, and and by the time you get out of there, you're going to be so relaxed, and you know maybe one session you could heal, and I want to do the uh, series of the concert, and that's my that's my dream, and that's what I'm working on right now. Um, VR Innovator, vr-innovator.com is my website, so you can go and check it out. I do have the game, virtual reality, game simulation. I have the um, Tsuchiya, uh, Kenichi Tsuchiya is a drift racer, that he's the original uh, drift racer. Uh, he's an F1 dri uh, driver, he doesn't want me to call a uh, uh, drift racer because he is an F1 racer and he just slide and, and drift while he was in the race when he was driving F1, you know. So that's how everything started out with it. because him, he was just like drifted, you know. And uh, he's such a 
a wonderful person and uh, he came and uh, we did the Tokyo Comic Con three years ago and he came and we did the panel we did the Q&A question in my booth like three times a day I was very successful and I had the uh, uh, VR simulation that you could uh, play you could ride the uh, trailer you could ride the um, VR game uh, PLSD and I'm still still making it but uh, I'm going to make the VR therapy first then I'm gonna go hard on the VR game and I'm gonna have a lot of game I want to do VR boxing um, the, the basketball just to shoot the three one and uh, I have a uh, skydiving and I want to make the VR not the game but simulation because people want to 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 feel what's it like to fly because you are afraid to go on skydiving and I'm, a, I'm afraid to go skydiving but I could go skydiving virtual reality so I want to give the opportunity for people who want to try but they can't so you know uh, people who in bed and they not be able to go travel any place and uh, I want to give the opportunity um, you know their dream to go to Paris and but you know she, she can't go uh, she can't travel you know she's in bed so I want to give that opportunity right now I want to I want to um, give a chance and I wanted to do something that nobody has done before and I want to create I want to um, create something and the first time they're going to feel and I want to create the headphone 360 and the vest and the smell and you're going to have a sixth sense and when you get sixth sense you're going to feel a real that's like you can't the brain can tell real or not real so that's what I'm trying to do um, my virtual reality is going to be real it's like a matrix it's like oh wow it's like it's almost that futuristic thing that a sci-fi movie everything you t think about it it's here um, you know, Elon Musk is talking about putting the chips 2020. I'm talking about, yeah, that's possible. And uh, AI, I'm getting ready to do the AI and the virtual reality and the IoT together. So I have a lot of ideas. I'm not a scientist, but I have all those great scientists and you know who graduate or who's professor at the Harvard. Um, you know, somehow like they find me. You know, neuroscientists. And uh, so I'm connected with the, all those, you know, professors and uh, university, um, and uh, you know, all uh, people who are in do have a studio in India, uh, Estonia, Poland, to China. I mean, the best engineers probably uh, Israel, Tel Aviv. Uh, not in America. I think the I don't know why. It's like, I think I think in Silicon Valley and uh, ethic and the same thing in Japanese too it's like a uh, you know totally different you know and uh, I I'd like to work with uh, people um, you know for, I know I, it's kind of crazy but I have a team of people who I never met and I just Skype and I just do FaceTime and uh, and uh, we became friends and uh, that's how I do business I don't need to have an office it's a new ecosystem I have a laptop and I travel all over and just within a month I was in New York three weeks and I came to San Diego LA for a couple of days and I'm here in Vegas and I'm going to back in LA and going back to uh, to New York then going back to Japan and China then coming back to New York and uh, maybe I'm gonna go to the Middle East or someplace but so I, and then I had to go to India. I had to, I mean, I had to travel all over the world because I have a team. And, uh, you know, it's exciting and it's tiring. That's why I was at the emergency. I got this uh, asthma problem. So, you know, I had to keep myself um, slow down, you know. Uh, then, uh, you know, whatever, you know, uh, whatever I come up with, I just, just do it. And if this is not like, I mean, people look at me, do you have a company? I mean, I have a company for three years. It's not normal. Um, a lot of companies, like a Jap Japan, Japanese companies, like 
you're not creating a company. Yes, I am, but I'm creating content. I'm creating something nobody has seen before, and I'm gonna, I'm going to IPO and watch me two years. Within two years, I'm gonna go IPO. And then they're gonna say, "Wow, she did it." And only reason that I, I strive for, nobody believes me, so I had to do it. I was the first one to do the uh, game music, so I'm gonna be the first one to do VR, the sound. How you can use the sound to bring people together and change how you fix and repair everything. So, and uh, you know, um, this is an exciting time, you know, and uh, I'm excited. VR Innovator, the best is yet to come.